Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the general lock number L170R-360-626IC-2348. Dash So I don't know what all of those parts on that part, uh, on that, uh, part number mean, but we'll discover it. Uh, we're going to go through a visual tour of all of the components in the box. We'll talk, about, ooh, we'll talk about the installation instructions. We're going to talk about how to go about installing it, etc., etc., etc. Okay, the business end first. This is a grade one lock, um, which means this is, this is compatible with a million life cycles on the lock. Absolutely. So this is an L170. Uh, this is a classroom function is what this is. This is an interchangeable core and this is going to be for small format. So BEST and all of the clones of BEST, even though I think Falcon would argue that theirs is not a clone, but anything small format. BEST, Falcon, Arrow, and copies of small format. That's going to go here. Um, classroom function, that is, uh, that means that we're dealing with a cylinder that will go in You'll turn the key 360 degrees and reverse the operation, meaning the exterior is either always unlocked as it is now. This is unlocked. I were to have a cylinder and turn that around, it would then be rigid until I reversed the process. Typical, you know, sort of uh, lever return that's on here. So certainly within a half of an inch of the face of the door. Um, it's heavy. This lock weighs 4.7 pounds. Um, and it's going to be available in a variety of, you know, derivatives, uh, finishes, functions, cylinder requirements, etc. This is going to have a two and three quarter latch bolt with it. It's going to have the UL symbol. It's going to have a letter F on it. And that means that when it's a capital letter F, I'm quite sure that it means uh, neutral pressure compliant. A lowercase f, I believe, is positive pressure compliant. One is neutral, one is positive. I forget the case, upper or lower. Um, that could be uh, that could be determined by contacting UL. Um, and of course, the G that's on here that's for general lock. This is of course what would be called a deadlocking latch bolt in a proper installation when that tab is retained in the on the face of the strike plate and doesn't go into the hole. You wouldn't you wouldn't be able to so easily Lloyd Lloyd the latch or tamper with it with some sort of instrument. Okay, that's what that is there for. Yeah, this has a nice functionality on it. Um, and we will, we're going to discover that. Um, it's going to have a package of fasteners, which we're going to go over. It's going to have some installation instructions on how to install the cylinder. We'll certainly have installation instructions and a template for the lock, which we're going to go over. Lever lock set with disassembly cylinder installation instructions. Yeah, you don't need to, you, do, you won't remove the exterior lever at all with this lock. There's just no reason to. Well, actually, there might be. We'll find out if there is in the install. You know what? There, it's possible that you would have to. Um, and we'll take a look at that, meaning to adjust for the door thickness is what I'm driving at. This is going to include a 4 and 7 8 strike, typical 4 and 7 8 strike for use in hollow metal frames, 4 and 7 8 tall. It's going to have an overall width of about an inch and 7 8 Up over here, it's about an inch and a quarter. But strikes are measured from the center line of the screw hole to the edge of the lip. And this is about an inch and a quarter, as you can see. And that's pretty typical for a standard lip length. It's possible you would need a longer lip length, even a shorter lip length, depending on your application. So be mindful to um, determine what your lip length is. Um, a shorter lip length would really be necessary if maybe you had a pair of doors with a welded flat astragal on the pull side of the active, and you're not slotting the astragal for the strike lip, you'd want a 7 8 lip length there. If you had some sort of applied molding or thick trim, you'd want an extended lip strike. And I don't know that General can handle uh, that requirement, but we can certainly get you extended lip strikes. 
So let's um, let's switch to the um, screen view where we can look at the extended description and the installation instructions. Okay, so here's the item that we're looking at. And um, cylindrical lock, indeed. It, it goes into a, a, a hole that's drilled through the door. It's a grade one lock, which means it's compliant or has met the requirement of a million cycles. Who knows how long it lasted in that cycle test. They probably hit a million, let it run a little bit longer, and then pulled the plug. Nothing to say it wouldn't have gone five million cycles. It's just, it, it, it was tested to a million and found compliant. Um, so, let's look here. Classroom lock. We talked about the function of that, and it's of course available in different functions, which we're going to discover when we get to the catalog. This is a satin chrome lock, satin chrome lever lock. It's small format, less the core. That's typical. Locks, you know, cores for locks are, um, in, they're, they're meant to be added as a separate line item uh, in a hardware set. That would be the, a proper way of doing it. Um, although many times they're just, you know, the inference or the reference to the cylinders included in the part number. Small format and large format uh, or full size if it's Schlage. Um, those cores are definitely in a separate line item of the, of the hardware set. So this lock is less the small format interchangeable core, a platform of cylinder that was invented and patented by Frank Best in about 1921. Um, you can definitely Google that patent and, and review that first small format core. It's not the same small format core that we use today, but the principle behind it is quite solidly related. Flat lever with a return. This is the generic type of Rhodes, Saturn, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just naming Schlage levers. Back set is two and three quarter. Now this latch bolt is inch and an eighth wide and two and three quarter back set, which means it's a 161 prep in your door. Meaning if you told your door supplier to prep it for a government 161, this would work. Except this is a modified 161 because it has the through holes at 12 and six, which we'll get to when we look at the template. ANSI strike. American National Standards Institute, that's that four and seven eight strike. You've got the through bolt holes at 12 and six, which are two and five eight center. And we'll get to that when we look at the template and that'll be our next move. Let's pull up the uh, installation instructions, the template, uh, all things related to this. And before we get to the installation instructions, I want to switch back to the camera view so we can go over this classroom function a little bit closer. So let's do so now. So as I said earlier, a classroom function is where, you know, the lever is either... Um, this lock is a clutch lock. I should That should have been mentioned. This series is a clutch. So when the function, when the keyed function is locked, it will still rotate. Well, this is in the unlocked condition because it pulls the retractor back. Now, you have a tailpiece in there for the interchangeable core. Sometimes, sometimes, or some people call those tuning forks, because if you held one in your hand, it would look just like a tuning fork that you would use to tune a piano. So when the core goes in... And it's actually oriented in the wrong location right now. Um, it should be basically horizontal, uh, vertical like that because the cylinder is really going to go in that way. And those two holes for the core are um, on either side of the broaching in the cylinder plug when the key's straight up and down. So I have that, you know, that tailpiece rotated to the point where it's unlocked. So if I use my flat bladed screwdriver and I turn that tuning fork 100, uh, 360 degrees, and I'm doing it so I can see what I'm doing, I turned it 360 degrees and it's still in the same orientation. Now what happens is, now it's locked. Okay, It rotates because it's a clutch lock, 
I put my, my key back in, so to speak, and turn it 360 degrees. Now it's unlocked again. So the point of all of that is if you install your cylinder, if you look at the back of the cylinder and see where the two holes are for the core, Okay, here's a small format core. I've got the control key here. And I think I have some operating keys as well. Maybe not. Oh, I do. Okay, so let's just use it. Let's just demonstrate this with an actual... Not sure which is a control key here that will work. One of them does. That's an operating key. That's a control key. Okay, so my tailpiece is not exactly vertical the way it needs to be. So I'm going to get in there and just going to set it vertical so that my cylinder can be expected to go in. I've got that set a little bit straighter. On my small format, this is the control log at my thumb. That is the control log that I'm moving back and forth. Retract the control log. <clears throat> and then insert the core into the cylinder. And you might have to jiggle it to get the tailpiece to go in those two holes. Once the core is in, lock it in by turning the control key counterclockwise to lock the core in. Now it's locked. Now, now it's in. Okay, this is unlocked. Now let's take an operating key. That's a control key. That is, that doesn't work. That's a control key. <laughs> that's, a, that's an operating key. Okay, so I put the key in. It's unlocked. I can only turn it one way, 360 degrees, pull it out. Now it's locked. Key goes back in. Turn it the other way. Now it's unlocked. Oh, no, now it's locked. Hold the phone. Yeah. Now it's unlocked. Okay. The point of this is, in your mind's eye, the tuning fork can be this way, this way, or this way. Okay. You've got to have it set all the way to one way so it goes so f it won't go any farther. Then bring it back to vertical. If you have it 180 degrees out of sequence, then you can only turn the key 180 this way or 180 this way, and it's not going to operate correctly um, in that sort of environment. I'd actually like to see what it does in that environment. Um, actually, it will work either way. Okay, so let's test. And actually, this might be the way it's meant to work. It is unlocked. Key goes in. I can turn it 180 degrees clockwise or 180 degrees counterclockwise. We had it unlocked. So 180 degrees, unlock it, bring the key back, pull the key out, it's still unlocked. Key in, rotate it the other way, bring it back to vertical, pull the key out, now it's locked. So it'll work in either, either case. I actually believe 180 either way is the proper way and what do you do when all else fails? We read the installation instructions. So let's pull those up. I'm going to pull the core out of here. Now the installation instructions for that
Well, and this is linked to down below this video. After the lock chassis is fully assembled and installed into the door, into a door, the tailpiece should face in this direction. Sure, we discovered that. During the installation of the cylinder, the tailpiece should be facing in this direction. So it appears as if we have that in that orientation. Okay, so that's what the installation instructions say. Let's put the core in. It ain't going to go in because that tailpiece is just too far over. Meaning it's it's too turned. It has to be a bit more vertical. Well, regardless, the only way to get the tailpiece in that orientation is to have it either 180 to, uh, 360 degree one way or 360 degree the other way. It's the only way to get it in that orientation, which means the first way in which I did it, um, with the 360 in, 360 out, is indeed the only way, I think. Although, yeah, okay. So let's let's do it this way. That makes more sense. We've basically got that. Well, we we have the drawing in the wrong orientation. Basically, that's the problem. So we have to turn this over. It's the only way to make these two drawings match. And there's no way to really get it there. So. What I want to confirm is whether or not the lock will reliably work with a 360 degree rotation. I have it locked, 360 degrees, till it stops, then I can take the key out, then it's unlocked. Back all the way till it stops, uh, then take it out, now it's locked. You just have to turn it all the way and then go back. The problem is I have it unlocked. If I go all the way to, to lock it and I come back to vertical, it's locked. But if I go past, yeah, we have no problem here. So it's the initial way that I did it that it works. The important thing to, um, to just remember is after the lock is installed, test it thoroughly. Locks, you know, can be put together in different ways. I've I've played with countless versions of classroom locks, um, and it's always 360 degrees. Um, but this lock does will work in either direction, um, as I had demonstrated. But I really believe the correct way is 360 degrees. The point is test it before you leave the job site. Make sure the installation's bulletproof, and then you won't have someone calling you say. I j it's Friday, 5 o'clock, I've got to lock this door and I can't get it locked and you're going to be at the lake having a, having a weekend. So test it before you leave. I know I learned that the hard way myself. So we've talked about the function of the, of the, the keyed function of the classroom. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn back to the... We're going to go over the installation instructions. Then we'll kind of look at it again uh, with uh, on camera is what we'll do. Okay, so now we have the installation instruction component of this, and then we're gonna we're gonna review it. Then we'll take it apart um, and see if we discover any trouble uh, with the unit. There's always gonna be, um, you know, it's not. There's always gonna be. It's nice to have a definition of the terms when you're working on this material um, for use for use on doors inch and three eighths to two inch thick. You'll need a Phillips screwdriver, and if you're gonna prep a hole, meaning you're gonna mortise a wood door. You'll need a 2 and an eighth hole saw, a 5 16 drill bit, a chisel, um, an inch and eighth chisel would be nice, um, a 1 inch drill bit, obviously the power tools for that material, 
Um, if you're going to prep a hollow metal door, that's a different conversation that I would be happy to have, how to go about doing that. Drilling some holes and die grinding and welding, reinforcing, welding or riveting or screwing, reinforcing mounting tabs. Um, I've done uh, lots of times and be happy to talk to you about that. Um, this is a lever lock, which means it's going to have through bolt holes. You know, this is a, a Schlage clone in the sense that the through bolt holes will be in the same locations that Schlage will be in and others. Um, and it appears to be a pretty simple construction design. Um, what happens here is this inside mounting plate will screw to the lock body assembly to the chassis itself and then the inside um, rose assembly those through bolts are going to then go to the through bolt studs and I'm not sure oh they are with this grade one model those can actually be removed if you really insisted on doing that I would discourage you from removing those um, actually this is the fixed model so we're dealing with the removable through bolt model so ours is down here okay so the first for the rest of page one discusses prepping the door for this I'm not going to go into a step-by-step -step detail on how to do that I'll that'll be a different video but if you're marking, the, the only thing I would like to add uh, or say about prepping the door is if you are prepping the wood door, be mindful of the back set. Now, in the installation instructions, the template is here. They are included. Okay. This lock can be done at two and three eighths, two and three quarter, and apparently five inch back set as well, which tells me they have an extension link. This lock is specifically packaged with a two and three quarter latch bolt. Okay. So the only thing that I will say about prepping the door is just be mindful of the back set that you mark the frame, mark the door at. And what I mean is is simply this. Um, well, you either going to have a square edge door or a beveled edge door, and where you where you locate two and three quarter from can be a very different location on a square edge door versus a beveled edge door. The true definition of back set is measured from the center of the door and not from the high side or the low side. Okay, so be mindful. If you're going to mark over here, you're going to need to compensate for that. You're going to be not far enough over. And over here, you're going to be too far over. And those holes are not going to line up. Not a huge, huge problem, but it's a it's a problem. Um, because when you're trying to get these through bolts through there, they're, they're, they're not meant to be off by that much. And when I mean that much, the definition of back set is one eighth and two. So for every two inches in door thickness, that dimension is an eighth of an inch or three degree. So you'll just want to make sure you get that, you know, uh, mortised exactly how you want because that three degree bevel, you know, it's going to throw you off. And three degree is the proper bevel um, that would be put on there. And one eighth and two Although it's not always been three degree bevel, you could look at um, catalogs that go back, you know, a hundred years, and it was a more aggressive bevel than three degree. So just be mindful when you're going to lay out your back set. Um, you want to compensate that. Your holes at 12 and six. I would very much encourage that you use through bolts because the amount of rotational uh, force that can be generated on a lever, you can really get that chassis moving in a direction you don't want, and you want those through bolt posts keeping that door vertical, you know, the lock in the door vertical, I should say. Let's continue on with um, taking a look at this lock and how to adjust the door thickness. Now, as we continue on, um, they talk about removing the inside trim from the lock. Um, use the catch lever catch tool to depress lever catch visible under hole of inside lever shank and slide off 
inside lever rows liner, which I call the inside row, uh, rows assembly, and the mounting plate. Um, adjusting the door thickness is not um, going to be done on the push button because this lock does not have a push button uh, at all. However, moving immediately to step six, remove outside mounting plate towards cylindrical case. Um, this lock does not have any such... This lock does not have any such information on the hub itself in terms of door thickness. So when we switch back to the camera view and take this lock apart, we're going to investigate that. So obviously taking the lock apart on the inside is going to be necessary to get it onto the door. Um, you know, and you'll have your two through bolts. You're going to bring your plate, screw the plate to the chassis. Inside rows liner uh, bolts will go to the through bolts. Your inside rows will just cover it. Then you'll snap your lever on or push your lever on. Now this latch, we're going to go over the latch on camera too because I suspect this latch gives us, yeah, we're going to, um, we're going to go over this latch. Install slide mounting plate and rose liner. Okay, so we're just discussing the same material. We're going to do this on camera. Then our template is here, which we've touched on. And then that final page shows us that orientation of the cam uh, or the tuning fork or the driver or the tailpiece of the small format, which we've gone over in depth. So I think at this time, let's switch back to the camera and let's pick up right on step six, um, actually step five, removing the inside rose trim. So to move on with lock disassembly, we're going to get to our screw package, and let's just look at all of that first. Um, don't think we're going to need all of these screws. So here is our catch tool is what they call that. You're going to want to keep that. We have, we'll get rid of the stuff that we know of immediately. We've got two screws for the 4 and 7 8 strike, 12, 24 combination wood machine thread screws. We'll, get, we'll put those down. We're going to have a couple of screws for the latch. And for some reason, these are abnormally long. I don't know why they're so long. They don't need to be nearly that long. Those will be for the latch bolt. We've got a couple of short stubby screws, which I don't think this lock takes, but we'll see. Then you have a total of four longer machine screws, and I think you'll need all four of these, but we'll discover that as we go into it. Um, these installation instructions and installation instructions are uh, written by people who import hardware from overseas. So the installation instructions that accompany that hardware is generally not written by someone whose first language is English, which is not a problem, but sometimes you have to read it a couple of times, not read it literally, unfortunately, and then kind of get the intent of what they're saying. So sometimes installation instructions can be a bit funny in that regard. So what we have here is, here's our lock. All of that's going to come off without any problem, but you do have to separate these two pieces. And in order to do that, you need your catch tool right into that hole that's there so you can insert that and get that to come off, which there it is. That comes off. Then you have your rows and your inside rows assembly. You're going to need to get, to, get the rows off. And it'll have to be coaxed off, having a, not necessarily a rubber mallet, but a rawhide mallet is a nice tool to have when you're working on locks. There we go. Now the rose is off. That's our inside rose assembly. You'll need to get to that. Then you're going to have the inside mounting plate, and it's right here. So. Out of curiosity, let's just go a little bit further. Yeah, that's not going to happen. That's that is not going to come off because there is no provision provision for it to come off. 
that I can see, nor is there any aspect of the installation instructions that will permit it. Um, having said that, I'm saying that this exterior assembly is So the center line to the, road, uh, the retracting hub is 7 8 so inch and three quarter thick, sure, that's going to work because of how deep that prep is. That's where they're getting that wide range, I think, of door thickness. You can get down to about 11 16 and that would certainly get you to your thinner door range. Um, let's take a closer look. I have indeed studied that a little bit further, and there, there is no way to really remove that. Uh, the tailpiece is captive inside of there. Um, it does not extract easily, and the way that that cam is inside of there does not allow you to depress that. So the ability of this lock to handle... And since we're just here talking about door thickness, when I, when I slap that on, you know, I can, you know, put my tape measure on the chassis, and I can see that, yeah, you know, it's going to handle an inch and three quarter thick door. That's just going to stand off a little bit. It's going to be fine. That's all there is to it. So we're, we're in really good shape on, on all of that. Most definitely. So where we were at was um, the inside mounting plate. So I had showed you, shown you earlier four longer screws and this mounting plate is a little bit weird to look at but here's how you know the face that goes to the door. It's going to have the prongs. They have to face the face of the door. If it's a metal door, metal doors are always going to have a little semicircle cut out at 3 and 9 o'clock. Okay? If it's a wood door, those are meant to bite into the face of the wood door, literally. Okay, so that, those prongs will go down. You're going to use two of your longer screws to go in here, and you'll tighten that here and here. Okay, Once that's tightened, you're then going to take your uh, inside rose liner. The other two long screws, they're going to go here and here into your through bolt posts. And zip zap, done. This lock goes together pretty easily. At that point, you would bring, of course, your rows. There's going to be a couple of... Yeah, it's not really clear where those are. Except you've got a couple of notches. Okay. Kind of see them there. That's where you're going to place those little indents on the rows. You're just going to pressure fit that on there is the bottom line. And I can tell by the evidence of what was there that's how those were installed. They, it just literally it just literally falls on. You can, you can really place it anywhere. Okay. At that point, it's all on the door. Then all you do is bring your interior lever, and you're going to push it on. It will snap into place, so to speak. You're going to tug on it to make sure that it's in place and that it actually rot rotates the retracting hub. There's one other. Th so at this point, what we've not used are those two little stubby screws. This lock design is clearly um, evolved, and those being in the screw package, I don't know what they're for. I mean, I know what they're for. Therefore, historically, they would go here and here, and they would lock the mounting plate to the chassis, but you'll use the longer screws for that. Um, oh, uh, I wanted to show you the latch, the uh, latch bolt. So when you install this, you've got to have... You'll see that there's this zinc, or this di zinc dichromate, and then a black tab. 
both of those tabs have to fit into the retracting hub accordingly. So that U-shaped preparation on the black version, that's got a saddle that's part of the retracting hub right here and here. That, that's, that's really, that is very important that it connects together. Uh, and you'll also notice that this is a, this latch bolt has a label on it. That means that this product is listed and labeled. It's listed, meaning it's been tested and found to be in compliance with fire rated, um, uh, it has been tested in a fire rated, uh, in a fire test, has been found to be compliant with the requirements, which would be a three hour test. The manufacturer is then permitted to apply a label to it. They're permitted to do the stamping on the face of the latch bolt. And that's where you'll look for evidence of compliance with fire rated requirements on the face of the latch bolt. Um, and I can't say that every manufacturer has a label on the latch bolt, but they do. And that's where you'll find that. If you are a fire door assembly inspector like myself, you would be, of course, looking for that evidence um, completely. Okay. This latch has a half of an inch latch throw. That latch throw requirement will also be listed on your uh, label on your door. So we've, we've slid into talking about fire rated doors. If you have a fire rated door, you are going to be obligated to, uh, if you have a fire rated opening, the opening is required to be compliant with fire rated requirements. All the hardware to be listed, and all the hardware to be at least listed and labeled otherwise. Hinges are not always, hinges are usually not labeled and that's understood, that's okay, that's acceptable. If there are spring hinges, they must be labeled. But a ball bearing ferrous base, a ball bearing hinge that is either steel or stainless steel will absolutely, by domestic manufacturers, be uh, one that is compliant uh, with a fire rated, with fire rated requirements. Now, as we look back at the installation instructions, we have quickly, and that adjust door thickness, that is definitely a reference to their grade two lock. The grade two locks, you would remove all the exterior material and then adjust that accordingly. Um, but not in the small format version, okay? There is no adjusting that here that I can see. There are no installations to remove this. Trim on small format is not removable in general. Uh, and we're gonna just conclude that this operates the same as other small format trim. So we've looked at step five, step six, step seven, eight, and nine. We've completed the installation. Now, uh, let's switch back to the screen view where we can look at the rest of the offering from this manufacturer. Uh, pardon me, the, yeah, the screen view, standby. Okay, so the lock we've got here, this is the link to the manufacturer's page. We can go ahead and pull that up and then take a look at the most current product catalog, whatever it might uh, be at that time. L170R, I know we're dealing with that, so you'll find where that comes up in, in the catalog, grade one cylindrical lever sets. L170R, And we see that 360 again, and I recognize that I've not dispelled what that is. We'll see if we can figure that out. So it's not listed anywhere in here what that means. However, when we study it, it, it in my opinion, it has to mean 360 degree, which means that's how you have to assemble this lock for it to work. Now, I had demonstrated that it would work either way, but it was my final opinion that 360-degree rotation was the proper way to do that. 
Um, and I believe that that's what the dash 360 means because it doesn't occur in any of the other clutched levers. Um, L170R, and here they are. So, so it doesn't occur in anything other than the classroom function and then this cl security classroom function. There's no rotation of the cylinder for a vestibule or an entrance function. So in my opinion, that's what that's going to stand for. So the L170R 360. 626 interchangeable core 234 for two and three quarter um, these are the different and this is on page three of that catalog the different finishes the functions are listed here the f the ANSI function number the ANSI column well is very important to know because you might be obligated to meet the function requirement of an f84 and if you looked up the ANSI document that governed functions of lock sets, you would most certainly find that. Um, as we scroll through the first part of the catalog, which is where the cylindrical locks are, you'll get grade one, grade two, even grade three knob sets. My experience with general comes in in their grade two and grade one locks, their exit devices and their closers, and I've never had a problem with any of that material. So you can review um, their lock offering right here knob sets, grade three. All of this material is going to be imported from overseas and I will use, you know, I'll use general lock when it suits the requirements of the job. And what I mean is there is absolutely no shortage at all of where to buy imported, Asian manufactured imported locks, uh, door hardware from. But what you'll find with general is that their inventory is, is in, uh, as a rule of thumb, quite deep. They've got a lot of it in stock, and they ship it out within 24 or 48 hours. And really, what are you buying when you're buying just another grade 2 or grade 1 cylindrical lever lock? It's just another lock, you know, in a lot of circumstances. If you're building a strip mall and you just have bathroom doors and you want a grade 1 lever privacy, you know what? Give me what's good. Give me what's value. Give me what has good value. Give me something inexpensive. Give me something that will last. You know, and at that point, since all of these imported locks kind of meet that criteria, what you're really buying is it's in stock and they ship it out quickly. And it's, and it's a fair price. So that in general does that job very well, in my opinion. Uh, deadbolts that they have here, mortise cylinder housings, uh, interchangeable core rim cylinder housings, etc. And you can just scroll through and look at their entire product line. The bottom line is if you are indeed doing a project like a strip mall and you want to, you know, you don't have a lot of need for uh, hardware because it, there might only be 12 units or 8 units in the strip mall, you're going to need hinges, door closers, exit devices, probably lever privacy sets, um, maybe some mortise cylinders, and they have all that stuff ready, really ready to go, um, et cetera, et cetera, and it's all listed here. Here are some exit devices. I've used their material. It's not any worse or any better necessarily than the next import importer, um, you know, etc. Uh, also on the manufacturer's page, you can see all of the general products that we sell and then a link to the manufacturer's website. Let's wrap up this video on camera. So in conclusion, really no problems or concerns with this lock at all. I think it's really, you know, it, it's priced extremely well. I wouldn't personally hesitate to use it. Uh, you know the you know where you're possibly going to consider not using this is what and and the other thing is it's got good lever return. Okay, so that comes back positive, locks in place. Po you know it comes back uh, uh, horizontal very very surely. That's a test. The exterior seems a bit stronger as far as I'm concerned, but nice nice quality item. Uh, what you're going to be wanting to be um, mindful of is, as I had said earlier, is the material on hand, does it ship out, do they do a good job, etc. And I think that they do. Um, what I might state about General Lock is a review of their um, 
installation instructions is usually a pretty good idea because I find that some of their hardware, um, their grade two lever uh, goes together a very particular way, unlike other locks that I'm familiar with. So by all means, review all of the installation instructions that come with the material. Um, you know, when all else fails, read the installation instructions, that sort of scenario. And uh, good quality lock. I wouldn't hesitate to use it or suggest that you use it. If you have any questions on the general, this is their part number. L170R and a 626 and an interchangeable core. Two and three quarter back set or any other general lock product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.